So far for the Beginner's Guides for Ultimate Alliance 3, we've had a look at one of the best support characters in the game that was Captain America, one of the most fun characters and that was Spider-Man, and then finally one of the strongest characters and that was Hulk. Now for tonight we'll look at one of the best boss and elite killers in the game, it is the awesome Black Panther. So in this Beginner's Guide we'll start off with a quick overview and we'll also look at his stats. We'll then have a look at the abilities, we'll check out the top 10 team synergies, We'll have a look at a synergy attack guide, so that's characters that Black Panther can get synergy attacks with ease if he fights alongside them. We'll then check out the build options available and look at the best ice weight to equip on him. We'll also have a look at his alternative costume and then we'll finish up with an overall summary and some in-game gameplay as well. So let's jump in and we'll start off with the overview and the stats first. For this section here then we'll have a very quick look at the abilities and then we'll talk about the stats as well. Now the abilities he has, three offensive abilities, they all have the piercing tag and then we've got one defensive ability which is very similar to Captain America shield and that you won't take any damage when you're maintaining this and you can actually have it up for close to a minute as well when he's leveled out at level 100. Now before we actually look at the stats we've got his hero traits so it's element and that means that you can place fire, ice and shock onto his claws which is absolutely amazing. I covered the why element is so good in a previous video so rather than go into that again here I'll actually just link that video in the description below so feel free to check that out but elements are completely awesome. When we look at the stats for Black Panther, his strength comes in at a B, so that's nice for putting out damage. Vitality and Mastery are both Ds. You then have Resilience, which is a C. Durability is a C as well. And then finally, his Energy is a B. So his strengths in regards to the stats are his strength and his Energy pool. So with that covered, let's jump in now and we'll have a more in-depth look at the abilities. The first ability we have here is Panther Claw and it's one that truth be told when I first played around with it I wasn't a massive fan but the more I've played with it in preparation for this beginner's guide I actually really like it. Now with this you can leap a fair distance across the screen to actually zoom in on enemies and do damage to them. For me the real purpose behind this skill is closing the gap between enemies so if you have the likes of one of the pesky snipers that appear in the Wakandan level, you know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that can one shot you, you can actually use this move to straight away get in their face and then take them down. So this is what I would use this skill for specifically, closing the gap between you and your enemies and then once you've closed that gap we'll use one of the skills we'll look at later on. This next ability, Bass Fury, is a purely defensive skill, so very similar to Cap Shield. Basically, you will absorb all damage. With Cap, he actually reflects it. With Black Panther, he absorbs it, and then when you release the button, you let out a large blast. Now, I did test actually holding this down for close to a full minute, because that's lo how long you can actually maintain it, and releasing it after taking a ton of damage, but it seems that the damage does cap out after a certain amount of time, and the highest I was able to get with the setup I had on Black Black Panther was around about 35,000 for that AOE explosion, which is still decent, but I was hoping we could get it to ridiculous levels, but unfortunately is not the case. Next ability is Aerial Assault, and it's one that really just doesn't click for me at all. Now, I know with Black Panther, when you actually use his heavy basic attack, he can juggle the enemies up, so you can follow up with a light attack and start hitting them, and potentially what you could do is use a heavy to hit them in the air, and then use this one to follow up, but it's just really tricky and there's much better skills you can use in place of it and I find a lot of times I might actually just jump over the enemy when I'm trying to hit them so personally this is a skill that I would say just avoid. This final ability here is one that makes Pan for one of the best boss killers in the game. So this is called Vibranium Slash. Now generally I'll use Pan for Claw first if the enemy's at range to get in their face and then I'll follow up by smashing the Vibranium Slash against the elites and bosses. It does an insane amount of damage. You can see the stagger rating is actually up at an A, so it'll pull their stagger gauge down in no time. The damage on it's a B. Now Aerial Assault and also Pan for Claw actually have a higher damage rate and they come in at A's but when I was doing testing 
damage is actually very similar, so to be honest, the way I would work it, just do the pan for claw, get in their face, and then just keep smashing away on Vibranium Slash, and you will absolutely melt bosses doing this. It's a, an amazing skill, and if you've never really played a hero that has a high stagger skill such as this with high damage, then you don't know what you're missing out. Test it out, you will absolutely love it. Now, that's all the abilities for Black Panther, so it's mainly just the two that I would use, the Panther Claw and the Slash. Bass Fury can come in helpful on occasions, but I find I don't use it too much. Aerial Assault, I personally just completely avoid. So that's all the abilities. Let's have a look at the top 10 team bonuses now. So with this section here, I'll always mention the fact that although you can get nice bonuses from running certain teams together, I would never feel forced into running characters you potentially don't enjoy or you don't want to play from a lore perspective. Play who you want to enjoy, but if you are looking to maximise your team bonuses, these are the top 10 ones you can go for. Now, I won't list them all, but from the one at the top to the bottom, the difference is 22% in the top down to 17%. The top team you could run them with would be Black Widow, Elektra and also Gamora. Now with that team you could get an additional 6% Strength, 8% Mastery, 3% Resilience, 3% Energy and 2% Vitality as well. So the majority of the increases there would actually benefit him with the, the setup he has. So that's the top 10 team bonuses. Next up we'll have a look at the synergies. So Black Panther then has three different traits that can actually proc synergy attacks. The first one would be Bash, and you'll see this the most often because it is attached to Vibranium Slash, and you'll be using that a ton on them. So that can actually proc Shockwave, Catalyst, and also Calamity. We then have a Barrage skill, so in turn that could proc Crash, Reflect, Elemental Barrage and Ricochet and then finally we have that defensive skill we looked at. This starts off with Safeguard and in turn if you get a Synergy attack you can get Shockwave, Reflect and you can get Ricochet which can actually be really nice as well. Now in regards to characters that are easy to proc Synergy attacks with, the top 5 would be Elsa, Bloodstone, Star Lord, Ghost Rider, 4 and Venom. So if you're doing an Infinity Trial you need to get a set amount of damage from Synergy attacks these are the characters you want to pair them up with. Characters you would want to avoid in that respect would be Rocket and Groot, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, Thanos, and also poor Scarlet Witch as well. She has a tiny amount of skills that can actually proc synergy attacks and it really pulls down her effectiveness, unfortunately. Now the next section we'll look at is one I have the most fun with. This is the build options and the best ISO weight to put on them. When it comes to build options then for Black Panther, there's two that's available. You've got your Elemental and your Non-Elemental build. Now the Elemental is by far the best, but I've included a Non-Elemental one here for players that perhaps for lore reasons don't want to run around with Flaming Claws or, or Claws that can actually shock and stun enemies. So i put that option in there as well. But the first setup, and it's the one that I run personally, is the Elemental build. So with this, firstly you want an ISO that can permanently add the ice, shock or fire attribute. From testing it seems that shock is the best one to add because when you shock an enemy it's the same as actually stunning them and that means all subsequent attacks while they're shocked will actually be crit hits so you can do a huge amount of damage from that. Now when you're running the elemental isos you also want to run one that would increase the damage of attacks with the respective element and that goes all the way up to 24.9%. Finally, what you could put on him here as well, and it would work nice with the fact that he's really good at staggering elites and bosses, is you can put on an ISO that can increase the stagger gauge damage as well, just to get it down even quicker. But this is one I would put on and test and see how it feels. This can go up to 12.8 when it's maxed out. That's a double A at plus 5. So that's the elemental build. I'll mention very quickly that with the elemental build, all your effects will actually proc on all skills except for the heavy attack for some bizarre reason and also Bast's Fury, but that makes sense because it is a defensive skill. 
If you want to run the non-elemental build, you're more of a, a regular Black Pan for Purist, then ISO-wise, you would want to put in one that increases the damage of piercing attacks because he's got that on his free combat abilities. Goes up to 19.2%. One that increases the damage done to enemies by 16.5. That's only if you don't have the piercing attack one, of course. You could go for the strength one as well, but that's further on down the list. And then finally, you would look to add one that can increase the stagger gauge damage as well there. So I don't actually have any crit ones on him. Now the reason I don't have any crit ones is that when you actually stagger and stun an enemy which will happen exceptionally quickly on Black Panther, all your subsequent hits while the enemy is stunned are automatic crits. So it's a waste putting crit rating on him because the majority of the time when he's attacking he will already have auto crit anyway. So that's the build options available for him. Next up we'll have a look at his alternative costume. Black Panther's solo trial to unlock his alternative costume is a really simple one. It's three waves of enemies. If you start with Panther Claw to get an enemy's face and then follow up with Vibranium Slash to absolutely smash them, then you shouldn't have any trouble with this at all. In regards to the alternative costume, pretty disappointing this one. It's quite hard to even see the difference in the colour swap on it. Now, with that covered, let's just finish off with a quick summary. So Black Panther then is without a doubt one of the premier boss killers in the game and as I mentioned earlier on, if you've not actually played a character such as Black Panther or Iron Fist that can absolutely melt a boss's stagger gauge and then you really are missing out. You need to you need to give it a test. When I first tried Black Panther I was astonished with how quickly I was able to take down bosses over the setup I'd been running prior to including them. He's also got that elemental trait meaning you can add the fire, the shock or the ice which is a heap of fun as well and it really does up your damage potential. So once again absolutely awesome character. In regards to the next one, I'm not fully decided yet, but I have seen a lot of votes for Storm, so let me know in the comments below who you would like to see, but it's looking like Storm could be very likely. As always as well, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the share button, hit the like button, leave a comment below, that's quite important because it helps drive engagement, which means YouTube actually recommends my videos, which has a bad habit of not doing for some reason. And finally, if you're new to the channel and have enjoyed this guide, there's lots more in that playlist that I'll put at the end here. And make sure to hit subscribe as well. But thanks for tuning in really, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you all again soon.